I'm John Pendry. I'm a professor of physics here at Imperial College and I've worked here for a good long time since 1981. I can't remember a time when I was not <laughs> interested in uh, things related to physics. Um, you have to remember that when I was growing up it was the uh, 40s and 50s um, when there was a huge excitement for science, uh, the endless frontier and all that sort of thing. Uh, and so there was lot, lots of um, lots of magazines and books uh, which enthused people uh, for science. It was an extremely exciting time for the scientists themselves and also a lot of young people were, were brought into science at that time and, and I was one of them. I think you find that people who, who have um, had a career in, in academic science certainly uh, very often their, their interest in science, as I explained, started well before school or, or certainly university and, and that was true of me as well. Um, I had a great interest in all things to do with, uh, with, with science and did a great deal of experimentation both in physics and chemistry. I used to build crystal sets and then radio sets. Um, but those early experiments were, were very important in um, forming one's mind as, as, as to how science works and how, how you progress a scientific problem. I think uh, the most exciting event was when I uh, realized that uh, these new materials we were working on, particularly the ones with, with uh, negative refractive index, that, that you, you could give a prescription for a lens that was perfect. And I remember walking um, uh, from my study uh, to the dining room where my wife was preparing lunch and saying to her, if, if, if I publish this, I will either be famous or infamous. <laughs> Fortunately, the idea was right. So, so it was a result that anybody could have shown uh, since Maxwell wrote his equations down uh, almost 150 years ago and it, it remained hidden uh, from us all until I stumbled across it. I, I wouldn't say I was looking for the result, it was something I was testing, uh, expecting to find quite a different result and this, this, this tr truly astonished me. It, it's an amazing result that you can find a material that will focus light without um, any limits to resolution and it was a real shock to my system. It's always important, I think, to um, be aware that whatever you're working on, uh, it's very likely that in 10 years' time it's not going to be uh, the hot topic of the day. Um, and if you've done well, well on it, you, you should have made sufficient progress that um, you know, it's probably finished in 10 years' time. So planning to move on is, is, is part of um, career training for a scientist and I, I, I do that by trying to keep aware of results outside my own field, um, keeping aware of what's going on and a watching brief and, and always be on the lookout for the next problem. So about every 10 years I've uh, shifted the emphasis of my research Often it's been a case of carrying skills across from one field to another, so it's not been quite the step function discontinuity that it's perhaps seen to a casual observer. I th think one, it's very hard to barge into a field when one doesn't bring anything that one can c contribute. It's much easier if you bring across some technique. One, one should always keep uh, an open mind outside the narrow confines of, of one one's own research because you've got to be prepared uh, to look for the next uh, topic of, of, of research and if you don't um, your research will fade and die and you have to be exceptionally lucky or um, uh, certainly exceptionally improbable to carry in the same field of research successfully all your, your life. Working fairly hard all, all one's life one, one gets little chance to, to look back and uh, summarize and ask what it was all about and so on. And uh, particularly changing fields, one uh, comes across new characters all the time. But um, 
you know, they say that before you, you die, your whole life flashes before you. I think my pendry vest will be a little bit along those lines. <laughs>